all right so let me start the quiz uh, i am ready so i mean uh, there was a problem so first two minutes the video was not coming that's why i'm recording it again the first and second question so the first question is uh, four images are shown and uh, see i mean which one is out one out so b and d actually are the ones which people get confused in that b is a white dots on the upper limbers that is horner tronta dots that is seen in vernal keratoconjunctivitis, conjunctivitis and d is a brown color pits that is herbert pits seen in trachoma means we have to match that uh, a and c are seen in trachoma or vernal keratoconjunctivitis. so vernal keratoconjunctivitis, conjunctivitis uh, what are the horner tronta dots these are eosinophils epithelium debris that is ige mediated allergic reaction and it heals to form a this one looking like arca pseudo geron toxon so b and c are in the favor of vernal keratoconjunctivitis and a is a because of the papillae which is seen in the upper palpebral conjunctiva there is a friction ulcer in the cornea so a b c are going towards vernal keratoconjunctivitis d is the answer that is seen in trachoma and the second question which is not true for levator palpebrae if you know the uh, full name superioris means it is present only in the upper eyelid it is coming from the apex of the orbit lesser wing of sphenoid and attached at the anterior tarsus main a, main purpose is to elevate the eyelid more than 21 millimeters and some fibers go into the eyelid skin forming the eyelid crease so even if you don't know the b option a b d are correct answers it is a single nucleus in the midbrain supplying the both lps that's why if there is a third nerve palsy involving the nuclear lesion there is bilateral ptosis so even if you don't know this a b d a c d you should know yeah the patient complained of drooping eyelid means ptosis it cannot be congenital because it is a acquired condition after cataract surgery it is there now many people must have uh, mount neurogenic thinking that peribulbar can destroy the third nerve no this is destroying yes it is trauma causing tendon of the lps problem and the tendon of lps is known as aponeurotic that is the most common cause of ptosis aponeurotic contains senile as well as postraumatic and that is the most common cause of ptosis the problem is not in lps muscle the problem is in lps tendon the tendon the aponeurosis is known as a tendon which is having dehiscence in this ptosis and you have to do tendon repair for this Another image question, this is what? This is the upper palpebral conjunctiva showing a cobblestone appearance papilla. Now this is specific for allergic conjunctivitis and allergic conjunctivitis can be out of these following, can be vernal kereto, can be giant papillary, can be atopic kereto conjunctivitis. But viral conjunctivitis is an infection that causes follicles mostly, like a sago grain appearance. Now what is, how to differentiate these two? This picture can be seen both in all the ABC, but vernal kereto seen in a young boy itching summers. Giant papillary is a allergic reaction to contact lens or sutures and atopic keratoconjunctivitis is a young patient having this uh, allergy. So viral conjunctivitis is a infection, follicles goes in favor of infection, papillae goes in favor of allergy. A false statement for this is, this is the right eye, this is the left eye, you should know right eye is OD, left is OS, Latin word but ocular dextrous, ocular sinister. So OS is the pathology here, that is true and that is the addition between the upper and the lower eyelid that is known as ankyloblepharon, not ureblepharon. This is due to partial failure of separation of eyelid and treatment is done. You cut it only for cosmesis because it will not cause any vision loss. So ureblepharon, you don't need to know everything, but ureblepharon can you rule out because A, C, A, B, D are correct options. There is a horizontal increase in the palpebral fissure in some children that is ureblepharon, but that is not over here. Now, if the corneal diameter is, okay, this is 12 millimeters in the correction, you will see corneal diameter is 12 millimeters. Okay. So the one sixth of the cornea is already covered. That is 2 mm is already covered. The palpebral fissure height is distance between the upper lid and the lower lid. That is 7. Means how much the upper eyelid is covering the cornea? 5 mm. Out of which 2 mm is already covered. So 3 mm is a ptosis. That is not the question. The question is how much is the marginal reflex distance means from the center of the cornea till the upper eyelid margin. The distance will be total is 12, 5 mm is covered. So the reflex will be the center. So reflex distance from the eyelid margin will be 1 millimeter. 
margin in fact distance 2 is distance of the reflex from the lower angle margin that is always 6 in process here the answer is 1 mm now you should know this because it is a previous uh, image this is eyelid coloboma there is a loss of tissues but this eyelid coloboma is not formed by failure of embryonic fissure eyeball colobomas are formed by failure of embryonic fissure that's why all the eyeball colobomas are inferior if the child closes his eyes the cornea can ex get exposed that is also a previous question that's the most common complication now if the bell's phenomena what is normal bell's phenomena good bell's phenomena when we close our eyes the eyeball goes up and out because of third nerve and seventh nerve involvement and if the bell's phenomena is good if the child closes his eyes the cornea the eyeball will go up and out the chances of exposure are less but this is not formed by closure of embryonic fissure it is formed by closure of eyelid development that's the answer over here track infection in lymph nodes with some conjunctivitis adenoviral is ruled out because there is no relation with burning micturation atopic is an allergy ruled out inclusion is chlamydia can can be associated with burning micturation but lymph nodes are not involved lymph nodes are involved most severe conjunctivitis urinary tract infection goes in favor of neisseria gonorrhea that should be the answer over here now this is a very simple question surgery for trichiasis and entropion for uh, safe strategy azithromycin antibiotic 20 mg per kg single dose it is spread by poor hygiene because it is an attraction by chlamydia a b a b c zero type facial cleaning but surveillance of program is not in s that is s uh, e is uh, environmental modification so that is not the answer over here Now, inability to close the eye in primary case many people have should many people would have marked this lid lag sign no inability to eye close eye in primary case is known as lag of thalamus that is seen in primary due to seminal palsy or bicularis muscle palsy the patient is not able to close the eyes exposure of keratitis can occur neuroparalytic keratitis can occur lag of thalamus uh, lid lag sign is when we look down the eyelid follows the eyeball so in down case if you look down the eyelid is not following that is lagging lid lag sign means eyeball uh, eyelid is lagging the eyeball that is seen in two conditions at your level one is congenital simple ptosis second is thyroid eye disease so lag of thalamus is the answer of this question that's the 10 questions best of luck yeah the patient complained of drooping eyelid means ptosis it cannot be congenital because it is a acquired condition after cataract surgery it is there now many people must have uh, marked neurogenic thinking that peribulbar can destroy the third nerve. No, this is destroying, yes, it is trauma causing tendon of the LPS problem and the tendon of LPS is known as aponeurotic. That is the most common cause of ptosis. Aponeurotic contains senile as well as post-traumatic and that is the most common cause of ptosis. The problem is not in LPS muscle, the problem is in LPS tendon. The tendon, the aponeurosis is known as a tendon which is having dehiscence in this process and you have to do tendon repair for this another image question this is what this is the upper palpebral conjunctiva showing a cobblestone appearance papilla now this is specific for allergic conjunctivitis and allergic conjunctivitis can be out of these following can be vernal kereto can be giant papillary can be atopic kereto conjunctivitis but viral conjunctivitis is a infection that causes follicles mostly like a sago grain appearance now what is how to differentiate these two this picture can be seen both in all the ABC, but vernal kereto seen in a young boy itching summers. Giant papillary is a allergic reaction to contact lens or sutures, and atopic kereto conjunctivitis is a young patient having this uh, allergy. So viral conjunctivitis is a infection. Follicles goes in favor of infection. Papillary goes in favor of allergy. A false statement for this is this is the right eye this is the left eye you should know right eye is od left is os latin word but ocular dextrous ocular sinister so os is the pathology here that is true and that is the addition between the upper and the lower eyelid that is known as ankyloblepharon not ureblepharon this is due to partial failure of separation of eyelid and treatment is done you cut it only for cosmesis because it will not cause any vision loss so ureblepharon you don't need to know everything but ureblepharon can you rule out because A, C, A, B, D are correct options. There is a horizontal increase in the palpebral fissure in some children that is ureblepharon. But that is not over here. 
now if the corneal diameter is okay this is 12 millimeters in the correction you will see corneal diameter is 12 millimeters okay so the one sixth of the cornea is already covered that is 2 mm is already covered the palpebral fissure height is distance between the upper lid and the lower lid that is 7 means how much the upper eyelid is covering the cornea 5 mm out of which 2 mm is already covered so 3 mm is a process that is not the question the question is how much is the marginal reflex distance means from the center of the cornea till the upper eyelid margin the distance will be total is 12 5 mm is covered so the reflex will be in the center so reflex distance from the eyelid margin will be 1 mm marginal reflex distance 2 is distance of the reflex from the lower eyelid margin that is always 6 in process here the answer is 1 mm now you should know this because it is a previous year, uh, image this is eyelid coloboma there is a loss of tissues but this eyelid coloboma is not formed by failure of embryonic fissure eyeball colobomas are formed by failure of embryonic fissure that's why all the eyeball colobomas are inferior if the child closes his eyes the cornea can ex get exposed that is also a previous question that's the most common complication now if the bell's phenomena what is normal bell's phenomena good bell's phenomena when we close our eyes the eyeball goes up and out because of third nerve and seventh nerve involvement and if the bell's phenomena is good if the child closes eyes the cornea the eyeball will go up and out the chances of exposure are less but this is not formed by closure of embryonic fissure it is formed by closure of eyelid development that's the answer over here track infection in lymph nodes with some conjunctivitis adenoviral is ruled out because there is no relation with burning micturation atopic is an allergy ruled out inclusion is chlamydia can can be associated with burning micturation but lymph nodes are not involved lymph nodes are involved most severe conjunctivitis urinary tract infection goes in favor of neisseria gonorrhea that should be the answer over here now this is a very simple question surgery for trichiasis and entropion for uh, safe strategy azithromycin antibiotic 20 mg per kg single dose it is spread by poor hygiene because it is an attraction by chlamydia a b a b c zero type facial cleaning but surveillance of program is not in s that is s uh, e is uh, environmental modification so that is not the answer over here inability to close the eye in primary gaze many people have should many people would have marked this lid lag sign no inability to eye close the eye in primary gaze is known as lag of thalamus that is seen in primary due to seven the palsy or bicularis muscle palsy the patient is not able to close the eyes exposure of keratitis can occur neuroparalytic keratitis can occur lag of thalamus uh, lid lag sign is when we look down the eyelid follows the eyeball so in down gaze if you look down the eyelid is not following that is lagging lid lag sign means eyeball uh, eyelid is lagging the eyeball that is seen in two conditions at your level one is congenital simple ptosis second is thyroid eye disease so lag of 